and welcome. And welcome to this video on multi-patchion analysis using ANSYS HFSS. And we'll use that same TOR 2014 known breakdown device as we detailed in a previous video. A multi-patchion analysis in HFSS requires at least one multi-patchion space charge region as the excitation and at least one C boundary condition. For the solution setup, select Advanced instead of Auto. Create an HFSS solution setup as shown. The solution frequency is the frequency to calculate the half wavelength distance. And in this case, we will we'll use 1 GHz. Create a discrete frequency sweep as the multi-patchion is dependent on the transient solver. And we don't need many points, so you can just use a single point, or you may elect to use a few points in order to check the sensitivity of multi-patchion. The frequency specified in the frequency sweeps will be reused for setting up the multi-carrier signal for a multi-patchion analysis. Check the box, save fields, all frequencies, while editing the frequency sweep. Otherwise, add multi-patchion analysis will be grayed out in the menu. Multi-patchion is dependent on the strength of the electric field, and there will be no multi-patchion if there is no time harmonic field to sway the charge particles in the simulation domain. Add a multi-patchion setup in the sweep, and the multi-patchion analysis sweep box appears. And whether you choose sweep, solve, or automatic solve, you must also click setup link. And that's to link the multi-patchion analysis with the frequency sweep. And by default, the link points to the current project and the sweep. And you have the option to force a simulation or to preserve the current. And after setting up the source, if the model contains variables, select the tab variable matching and select appropriately. Click the excitation tab so you can specify the excitations or the DC bias fields for the multi-patchion analysis. You must include at least one terminal with a positive magnitude and the input signal for the exact mode for each mode or terminal is the linear combination of all the carriers multiplied by the square root of the power multiplier. And after setting up the excitation, press OK to complete the link setup. Afterwards, you can only edit the setup link if you click Edit Link. And so there are two options. One to manually set up the multi-patchion power sweep or to allow HFSS to locate the multi-patchion power level. The sweep solve allows for a more specific power sweep analysis. So you will need to enter a stop time. And this is how long you will want the impact to last. And depending on the materials and the geometry, multi-patchion may need longer stop times. The multi-patchion simulation will be terminated by the stop time, which is usually set to say 20 cycles of the lowest frequency. The stop time terminates when the particles reach zero or exceeds the maximum number of particles. Using the sweep mode solve, you need to enter in sweep points. The options are linear step, linear count, single point, or a single point sweep. You can model one power level to see if it multipacks or not, or if you want to know the multipaction point setup in a power sweep. And specifying the power sweep multiplier scales the power of each port or terminal voltage. And each mode in a driven modal design or a driven terminal design has one watt of input power when there's only one mode or one terminal active. 
The power multiplier is essentially the input power of the multi-patch analysis. Now for both the sweep solve and the automatic solve, you need to select whether the multi patchion analysis type will be fast or not. And the fast simulation is less compute intense, but also is a bit less accurate when the structure to be analyzed has complex geometry and has finer details. However, the fast simulation is satisfactory for most applications. Now checking the charge distribution tells the HFSS solver to write the data for the charge distribution for plotting the particles in post-processing or displaying in a third-party uh, tool. For our purposes, let's use the automatic solve option with the setup as shown. The multi patching setup is completed. Click the multi patching analysis and select Analyze to run the multi patching simulation. And now the automatic solve button allows automatic determination of the multi patching threshold. Given the power range provided by you, the user, the software determines which power multiplier to simulate next based on the previous multi patching history. Instead of just reading a preset multiplier, power multiplier from a table. And the solver automatically uh, terminates when the lowest power threshold is found. And while the automatic simulation is running, you can actually check the breakdown status for those power multipliers that has already been simulated. And you do this by clicking breakdown under the multi patching solve. And now this opens up a solutions dialog box and that has a multi patching tab and it provides the power and the breakdown information shown here. And when the auto solve command converges, there'll be a message showing the lowest multi patching power threshold also in the messenger manager window. Let's go ahead and look at the results. Right mouse click. Results, create multi patching report, or use the tab. And this model did not multi pack at 50 watts, which was our lower end. And the automatic solve calculated a multi patching threshold. Let's go ahead and display the charge particle animation. And once the multi patching simulation is finished, you can right mouse click, field overlays, and select plot particles. And this opens up the Create Particle Plot dialog box. And when there are multiple multi patching setups and power multipliers, the, the dialog box allows you to select a specific solution and power to plot. Click Done to cause a particle plot to appear in the modeler window. Now the properties of the particle plot are shown in the properties panel. And once you've generated the multi patching plot in the field overlays, you can create an animation of the movement of the charges. Right mouse click the multi patching plot and select animate from the shortcut menu. And by default, the charge distribution for all time frames will be animated and the animation comes with a label showing the current time. Click export and choose the path and the file type of the animation. So in summary, we used the HFSS and the ANSYS electronics desktop to simulate a multi patching analysis of the TOR 2014 known breakdown device. And multi patching allows for insights for design needs. And with the growing interest of satellites to fulfill the needs of 5G, simulation for multi patching is needed to identify the components that are prone to multi patching, especially before launching a satellite into space. Failure is not an option for a mission critical space project. And to find more information about multi patching, or any other ANSYS topics on simulations, check out our channel for more how-to videos 
at ansys.com forward slash courses today. Thank you for watching.